My brother priests, I greet you in the immense love of the risen Christ. Although I am unable to be with you for this important time together, I wanted to take a moment to thank you for making time to gather in a spirit of fraternal solidarity and also to convey my gratitude for all that you do to shepherd, care for, and minister daily to the faithful of this local church. I fully realize that this period of interregnum is one of particular challenge for you and for many in the diocese. The faithful of this diocese rightly want and need a new beginning, and the appointment of a new leader, a new bishop, will without question provide an opportunity to reinvigorate our purpose and our mission to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ across the state of West Virginia. I'm so grateful to you for your fidelity and for your perseverance, despite the considerable challenges that we continue to face. You surely grasp what, what is at stake and what matters most, namely, that the faithful witness to the work of God the Father among us and our relentless service to those who are most vulnerable, those in greatest need. In my conversations and visits with you, it's abundantly clear to me that the work of faith continues undaunted. In your words, but also in your leadership and in your ministry, you boldly proclaim and make evident that indeed the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. Still, you are often faced with the need to provide answers and clarity to matters that might be unclear to you. The faithful here naturally want answers. They want to understand how things have developed as they have, and they want to feel once again confident and once again to trust implicitly in their church and in their spiritual leaders. Although there are unique issues here in this diocese, the fact is we continue to confront a crisis of confidence and a crisis of Catholic identity across our nation. And yes, even in the church universal. Although change never comes quite fast enough, I do believe that we are on a path to genuine reform and genuine renewal. The candor with which we are confronting our failings, both in the distant and more recent past, has forever changed the way we regard our responsibility to be true pastors, genuine shepherds of souls, and faithful disciples of Christ Jesus. And yes, with God's help and with continued perseverance and prayer, our church will emerge stronger, more accountable, and more credible in the eyes of those to whom we minister, in the eyes of those we are privileged to lead, as well as to society as a whole. Without question, we have a lot of work to accomplish but surely we know that we cannot and we will not falter if we rely on one another, pray for, support, encourage one another in the spirit of true priestly fraternity. Like Simon Peter in John's Gospel, we know in our hearts and we proclaim, Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone 
have the words of eternal life. And so I encourage you to open yourselves to the Lord's ever-renewing spirit during this time away from your daily work to reflect, to share experiences, insights, to converse candidly about the challenges you face, but also about the opportunities that are before us to reinvigorate this local church and the faith of those we serve. Please know, dear brothers, that you are in my constant prayers, even as I earnestly ask you to remember me in your prayers. I look forward to being with you again soon, and in the meantime, to continue to work with you to bring about that healing and renewal that the risen Lord has made our promise to claim. May God in his rich and abundant mercy inspire in you his comfort, his strength, and most especially, his abiding joy. I offer you my heartfelt blessing and my constant support. And may Almighty God bless you, my dear brother priests, and keep you always in his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.